Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you hear me? All right. I can hear me. Don't you just love those times when you, just be honest, you feel like complete crap before service and the voice of the stranger is running rampant trying to tell you every reason why you shouldn't go, you need this, you need that, you got to stop and take it easy, take a breath and just get some you time or whatever. And you tell them to shut up and go to the pit of hell and you come to service anyway and you get touched beyond measure. Anybody ever go through that? Amen. Amen. There's nothing like his presence, man. Nothing like his presence. During that song, Majesty, um, as we were worshiping, I could see the Lord here in this room, sitting on his throne. And he said, be encouraged. My people need to be encouraged because I'm with you. And I see what you go through. I see what you battle with. I see the struggles that are going on right now. And I haven't forgotten about you. You know, and this is a, a time of, of great warfare. It's a time of great, um, great evil all around. And it is bombarding us as followers of Christ. It's bombarding us as spiritual warriors. And I don't know about you, but I go through it. I'm sure every one of us in here go through it in some way, shape, or form. So I just want to tell everybody right now just to be encouraged. Don't give up. Don't give up, don't give up, don't give up. Continue in your blessed routine. Continue kicking the devil's butt. Even if you don't feel like you're kicking the devil's butt, you're kicking the devil's butt. When you follow and see through your blessed routine, when you're continually in warfare and prayer, when you are continually worshiping and showing up to services and putting the practice as things that you're learning regardless of how you feel, you are kicking the devil's butt. And he's going to tell you, Day in and day out, you're not doing nothing. The reason he's telling you that is because you're doing so much damage. So tell him to shut up and keep kicking his butt. Amen? Galatians 6, 6. Hallelujah. Everybody there? It says... Let him who is taught the word share in all good things with him who teaches. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. So if you're sowing in the spirit, are you going to reap life? Amen. So no matter what you feel, you keep sowing in the spirit. For he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. But he who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. And let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. So pretty much the reason why I wanted to use this scripture, it's kind of cool how everything, everything flowed with the Lord bringing a word of encouragement this morning. Is I know things are tough. I know things are tough for me. I know things are tough for you guys. But we're tough. We are tough in him. So no matter what comes against you, you've got to always constantly stay reminded that I am a warrior for the Most High King. That is a hardcore, tough position. And that's who we are. And as long as you keep that in your mindset, no matter what the devil tells you, you're not going to fall off. Discipline, truth, must be our motivation in these times despite how we feel. Things are very difficult right now. Don't grow weary and don't get discouraged. Things don't feel good, but we have to press through and fight harder than ever, no matter how bad it feels. In this time of wait, we must get our houses in order. And that's a lot of what we're going to talk about today. You know, Pastor was talking about the the teaching, the wait, and he's been talking a lot about... um, God tightening things up and getting our houses in order, getting ourselves in order, getting our temples in order. Um, So we're just going to go over some things today about being a faithful steward. 
And that's the title of the teaching today, Faithful Steward. We're going to go to Luke 16, verse 1. So we know that we've all been trusted with a lot. We have physical things we've been trusted with, physical things we're accountable for, and we have a lot of spiritual things that we're accountable for and that we are required to be good stewards of. It's a question the Lord has really been putting on my, on my heart a lot the past couple months, and it's just a simple question. Are you being a faithful steward with what God has given you? You know, there's an area where you hear a question like that, and then you start evaluating all the stuff in your life that you have to take care of, the stuff that you have in your yard, in your house, in your dishes, in your laundry, in your cars, in your, your food situation, and and go into services and all this stuff, and the enemy will try and come in and drive you nuts and try and make you see all the stuff that you're not seeing through all the way and that you need to take care of all the stuff. you got to do it fast because you got to get in position. you got to keep it maintained. you got to get yourself in order. And that's when you need to step back and repent for not seeing through things that you were not seeing through and commit them all into the Lord's hand. And he will give opportunity divine timing opportunity to deal with each and everything. Amen? The key is, is seeing it. Is taking that step back, searching yourself through, searching through what he's given you, and then saying, okay, Lord, I, you know, I haven't done a great job here. I haven't done a great job here. Or here. <laughs> or here. <laughs> but uh, I need some help with this stuff. You know, I'm sorry for not taking care of your stuff properly. I repent. My heart's desire is to do the right thing for your kingdom. Lead me and guide me in taking care of this. And he'll show up and show out. So don't think that you've got to, like, take care of 500 things at one time and drive yourself nuts and nothing gets taken care of anyway. Because that's, that's the devil's plan, is to spin you out of control and to overwhelm you and to get you to a place where you lose your peace. Amen. Luke 16. For me, this is kind of a, a reality check, a wake-up call. You know, we can, we're given so much here, it's easy to get complacent, and it's easy to, to let things that don't seem very important slip by the wayside and, and just kind of, that's not important. But you know, what I've, what I've learned coming through the program and everything is that the things in the physical and the things in the spiritual run parallel. God has entrusted with, with us physical things, and he's trusted trusted us with a lot of spiritual things. And if you're not faithful with the physical things, he can't trust you with the spiritual things. If you can't take care of your house, you can't take care of your family, you can't take care of your vehicle and your finances and stuff like that, you're not going to get the big spiritual things. So it's an area where we examine ourselves, we see those things, and we invite the Holy Spirit to help get, us in, get them in order. Amen? All right. Luke 16, verse 1. It says, He also said to his disciples, There was a certain rich man who had a steward, and an accusation was brought to him that this man was wasting his goods. So, so he called him and said to him, What is this I hear about you? Give an account of your stewardship, for you can no longer be steward. I don't want to hear that from God. <laughs> I, I don't want to hear that. Then the steward said within himself, what shall I do? For my master is taking the stewardship away from me. I cannot dig. I am ashamed to beg. I have resolved what to do, that when I am put out of the stewardship, they may receive me into their houses. So he called every one of his master's debtors to him and said to the first, how much do you owe my master? And he said, a hundred measures of oil. So he said to him, take your bill and sit down quickly and write 50. Then he said to another, and how much do you owe? 
So he said, a hundred measures of wheat. And he said to him, take your bill and write at 80. So we see that he, he began to start tightening up. He began to start taking care of business. And it says, so the master commanded the unjust steward. Oh, I'm sorry, I think I skipped something there. No, I didn't skip anything. Verse 8. So the master commended the unjust steward because he had dealt shrewdly. For the sons of this world are more shrewd in, this, in their generation than the sons of light. And I say to you, make friends for yourselves by unrighteous mammon that when you fail, they may receive you into an everlasting home. He who is faithful in what is least is faithful also in much. And he who is unjust in what is least is unjust also in much. Therefore, if you have not been faithful in the, righteous man, in the unrighteous mammon, how, how will, who will commit to you your trust to the true riches? And if you have not been faithful in what is another man's, who will give you what is your own? No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. And this is powerful, you know, and this is something that I know a lot of people take for granted and they don't pay attention to. Um, you know, especially for people like in the programs and, and people that are, again, Pastor and Kate's houses or, or even in other people's houses, if you're renting or, or whatever. And we're talking about physical things right now, but um, you worship the Lord in the way you take care of the natural things. So if you're a disciple in a discipleship house, how you do your chores, how you take care of saving power, how you take care of your mouth and your attitude when you're asked to serve or sow. That's all worshiping the Lord or it's worshiping the devil. So there's an area where if you want your own house one day, you better start taking care of the house that God's given you right now that doesn't belong to you because how you take care of what you have now is how you're going to take care of everything else in the future. And if you're not taking care of it according to the will and word of God, you will not get what you're looking for. And if you do, it will be taken from you. So it's an area where I know that God is tightening up every area. There are so many areas in our lives that we don't even think about. Finances, how we're spending our money, what we're spending our money on, what we're eating, what we're doing with our time. Um, and this is a reality check for myself. I'm not up here talking about this because I have perfected it by a long shot. I, I am in serious check myself right now with this whole thing. And it is something that God has really put on my heart. And it is something that I know um, for a lot of us, because we're given so much spiritually, we think that we're good. And there's so much more that goes along with taking care of the spiritual. There's a lot of the stuff in the physical as well. So... I encourage everybody here in this place today, search yourselves through. Do a, do a divine list of things in your life that God has called you to be a good steward of, to be a faithful steward of. And if you are falling short in any area, commit it into his hands. Repent and ask him to make divine opportunity for you to get things in order and for you to be able to take care of things. And if you're lacking in your responsibilities, tighten up. Tighten up. You're not cleaning a house for your house manager. You're cleaning a house for the Lord. You're not turning off lights and saving water for your house manager. You're doing that for the Lord. And it's helping Pastor and Kate tremendously. So, I mean, be mindful of these things. They seem small, but they're major. And it says a little leaven leavens the whole lump. So you may be strong in your prayer closet. You may be strong when you go to worship. You may be strong when you go to warfare, but you're leaving all these little things behind which are opening doors to the enemy to come in and steal, kill, and destroy. Amen? You know, there's also an area where you start falling short in areas and you start slacking off in areas and you um, are not being faithful in areas. God tends to pull things away. He, he removes things from us. And, and it happens in the world too. If you're at your job and you're at a certain position and you start falling short, you don't see things through, you get demoted. So, right, says, if things are being taken away, then you are at a position. It's not, attack, it's not an attack on you personally. It's an opportunity to search yourself through and get back in position. 
Don't allow offense to stop you from serving where God has called you to serve. You know, there's a, there's a place in time where each one of us here in this room have probably been rebuked. And we've probably been rebuked pretty firmly. I know that I've been rebuked pretty decent. And it, your first reaction is, are you serious right now? Like, are you serious? <clears throat> What's going on here? And I'm, of course, your first reaction is, they don't know what the heck they're talking about. They don't know what they're talking about. I'm going to tell you right now, if that is your reaction when you get rebuked and you get rebuked decent over something, you are prideful. And you need to be rebuked for being prideful. Because if you're saying, who do they think they are and how could they talk to me like that and, and all that stuff, you're prideful and you're offended. And the bottom line is we know that rebuke and counsel correction and direction brings protection. It brings protection. So in this, no matter how you feel, offended, mad, angry, bitter, repent, and put it before the Lord. I could tell you nine times out of ten, if somebody tells you you're prideful and you don't like that they said that, you are prideful. So deal with it. It's okay. We all deal with pride. Every one of us deals with pride. Every one of us deals with something. So if somebody comes to me and rebukes me for something, and I think it's the stupidest thing in the world, and it's happened. But when I get over myself and I put it before the Lord, I'm telling you the ministry from the Lord that comes is, is blows my mind. And it puts me in a humble place where I need to repent because it may have been something that I thought was minute, but in his eyes, it is a major open door to the enemy. So there's an area where we have got to humbly and openly receive rebuke and receive the smackdown that comes. Amen? Don't, don't take it personally. Now, where I work, um, that's one of their main sayings, man. I was sitting in a room with a bunch of the bosses a couple weeks ago, and there was a group of us sitting in there. <coughs> And they were kind of going over this, this stuff with us, and they're, they're bringing us up and training us to, to grow in the company or whatever. And one of the guys that's been there for a long time, he said, listen, one thing you've got to completely understand is never take anything we say to you personal. It's all about your growth. It's all about making you better at what you do. Rebuke makes you better in this walk if you take heed to it and you put it to practice. Amen? We must be faithful stewards with everything God has trusted us with. Not allowing the enemy to overwhelm you with stuff. 1 Corinthians Hallelujah. Everybody there? Let no one deceive himself. Hmm. If anyone among you seems to be wise in this age, let him become a fool that he may become wise. Hallelujah. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, he catches the wise in their own craftiness. And again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise that they are futile. Anybody ever been caught in their own craftiness? It's probably why we're all here. <clears throat> Therefore, let no one boast in men, for all things are yours, whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas or the world or life or death or things present or things to come, all are yours and you are Christ and Christ is God's. Now we're going to keep going into four. Let a man so consider us as servants of Christ and stewards of the mystery of God, mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that one be found faithful. How many of you know that we are stewards of, of this ministry? Does everybody understand that? You were called here to fulfill a position in the body of Christ. This is your unit. 
This ministry is our unit in the military of the Lord. And it's important that we all grab a hold of that. It's important that you, you don't take it for granted. A long time ago, a long, long time ago, I had a vision about the ministry. I was praying, <clears throat> and I was thinking about, you know, like the body of Christ in general and just asking the Lord questions about, about things, you know. Why, did, why does this group over here get to do this? And why does this person get to do this? And why is this person on TV laying hands on people and people getting healed and, and all this stuff? Um, and so when you, when you think about it in a military aspect, there, in the military there's different units that do different things. And God has the body of Christ set up in a military operation. We know that this is a military operation. So in that, what I saw with us I always consider us like the muscle of the body of Christ. Like we're the ones that kill the enemy. We are the ones that cut the heads off of demons. We are the ones that call down fire on, on wickedness. And we do it all behind the scenes. And, you know, I think a lot of people have a hard time with that because <clears throat> a lot of people want to be in the spotlight. A lot of people want to be up at the pulpit and they want to be laying hands on people around the country and go overseas and, and all that stuff. God has called us here for a reason. He has called us here for a specific reason to get raised up and to be the frontline spiritual warriors for this world. Can, I mean, you've got to grab a hold of how serious that is and how important of a position that is. What we pray here, what we worship here, what we do here goes out globally on the earth, in the earth, in the heavenlies, and in the universe. We are breaking down strongholds. We are making ways of escape for people that have been taken captive. We are shutting down dimensional ports and portals and portways all over. You may not see these things, but we warfare by faith. We know we're killing the enemy. We know that people are being set free from what we're doing here. And I think a lot of times people grow weary in it. They want to do something that brings more fulfillment to themselves. They want to go out and be a part of doing all this stuff. And, you know, there's times that we get to do that. There's times that we get to lay hands on people and pray for people and go out and you meet people in your daily, in your daily walk and everything. Um, but if you find yourself wanting to go somewhere else because the things that you want to do aren't being done, you're out of order. If you're seeking any glorification for yourself or seeking any spotlight or that's your desire is to be out in front or you're trying to fulfill something that you think you need to fulfill inside of you, you're out of order. Bottom line. I mean, and you know, I, I know that a lot of people have had those battles and they've had those thoughts and they've gone through those things. It's tough to stay behind the scenes and kick the devil's butt all the time. We are a tough group of individuals. We deal with things toughly. We get rebuked toughly. We deal with a lot. But how much more does God bless us when we stay in position and when we see through what he's asked us to do and not chase soulish pleasure? I don't know about you, but my life, no matter how hard things get, it is the most blessedest it could be. I mean, it's just consistently just more and more and more and more and more. He just keeps bringing it. There's always increase. There's always there's always more. There's always more blessing. There's always more favor. There's always more love. There's always more peace. Even in the midst of chaos, there's peace. So for those of you that want to grab a hold of something right now before you fulfill what you're supposed to do, shut it down because it's not going to last, I promise you. <clears throat> it is a high honor to be a steward of the mysteries of the Lord. It is a high honor to be a steward of this ministry. Don't take it for granted. <clears throat> you know, this is something that, I mean, it, it really blew my mind. And uh, the Lord really put this on my heart, and it's something I believe we all need to write down, so I'll say it a couple times. Our warfare opens up heaven to move against the enemy clearing the way for ministers globally to reach the lost. <clears throat> so, you know, you see all these people, these big evangelists, and you got groups like Shake the Nations and 
um, all these different places. They're going, that, that's their call. Their call is to go to other countries and to bring revival. What we do here brings them covering fire. Do you understand that what we do here opens up heaven and pushes back the powers of darkness for these people to invade those areas with the love of Christ? So whether you know it or not, we are a part of something huge. Don't ever let the enemy make you feel small or make you feel like you're not doing anything. It's a lie. You continue and fight and pray the prayers that you've been given. You press on in warfare. You press on in your prayer time. You press on in worship because we are moving mountains for the kingdom of God. Don't listen to the lie of the enemy saying that you need to fulfill your soulish pleasures. You're doing the work of the almighty God. And as you see it through in faith, he will show up and show out in your life. 1 Corinthians 12, 12. <clears throat> you know, I like to see myself as like one of those Apache fighter helicopters sometimes. I'm like praying and praying in the spirit and warfare, and I see this big giant Apache helicopter with the rocket launchers and the big chain Gatling gun machine gun. And he's just, just cutting the heads off of demons, man. Just cutting them off. <clears throat> you got to get real with it like that, though. I mean, that is, that is who we are. We are warriors. We, are, we take the heavens by violence, by force. We're not hugging teddy bears and all that stuff. We're calling down fire. And you got to take it serious, man. It's not a game. This is, this is a reality. It needs to be a reality to you. In your spirit, soul, and body, you need to know that I am, because he is, a serious warrior. And know that, too, you're nothing without him. So don't allow it to get you puffed up, because you're nothing without him. First Corinthians twelve twelve. Hallelujah. For as the body is one and has many members, but all the members of that one body being many are one body. So also is Christ. For by one spirit we were all baptized into the body, into one body. Whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and have all been made to drink into to one spirit. For in fact the body is not one member, but many. If the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I am not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I am not of the body. It is, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where would be the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where would be the smelling? But now God has set the members, of each one of them, in the body just as he pleased. Just as he pleased. Does everybody understand that? You were positioned as God divinely decided to position you. You didn't end up here by mistake. You didn't come here to change this place. I've, I've, people have actually come here and thought they were here to change this place. You came here to fulfill a position in the body of Christ, in the army of the Lord. And it was preordained by God for you to be here and for Pastor and Kate to be your spiritual heads. So when Pastor speaks to you, God is speaking to you. When Pastor says no, God is saying no. When Pastor says, this is what I see for you, that is what God is saying to you. He is our spiritual head. He's our spiritual authority. If you take for granted and disobey the things that pastor sees for you and tells you, what do you think is going to happen? I'm sure everybody knows the answer. It's not going to be good. It is being disobedient not to pastor. It's being disobedient to the Lord. It's slapping the Lord in the face. So take heed to the counsel, correction, and direction of the authority of the Lord. Because it's either going to save your life or you're going to allow it to destroy you. And these are things that people just don't take serious. They think they know better. They think that they've got it under control. They think that 
um, whatever, they get offended and think Pastor and Kate don't know what they're talking about. Do you think Pastor and Kate have made it this long and been filled this long and they haven't gone through some things? Do you think that you're the only ones going through some things? They go through some stuff. David and Carlin, they go through some stuff. Me and my wife, we go through some stuff. But the devil ain't taking us nowhere. We get offended, we get upset, but we take it to the throne, not the phone. So if you get offended or upset with something that Pastor or Kate says to you or something that David and Carlin says to you, take it to the throne and deal with it. Amen? Where were we? And if they were all one member, where would the body be? But now indeed there are many members, yet one body. And the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. Nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. No, much rather those members of the body which seem to be weaker are necessary. And those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, on these we bestow greater honor. And our unprecedentable parts have greater modesty. But our presentable parts have no need. But God composed the body, having given greater honor to that part which lacks it, that there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care for one another. <clears throat> so we're all in this together. We need to be encouraging to one another. We need to be uplifting to one another. And we need to be spiritually discerning what's coming out of our mouths. Amen. Amen. We are a unit. We are a team. We are a military operation in the body of Christ. <clears throat> and what you speak about your brothers and sisters is being recorded in the heavenlies. And what you speak about your brothers and sisters, if it's life, it's going to bring you life. If it's death, it's going to bring you death. What you speak is what you eat, and what you eat is what you become. We all know that there's power, there's death and life in the power of the tongue. So if you're speaking bad about your brothers and sisters, instead of lifting them up, you got bad coming, plain and simple. So we got to be aware of these things. Time is, I mean, you know, we hear all the time that time is running out, but time is seriously running out, man. And I know we can all sense it. We can all tell that things are a lot different the way things are going in the world. It is getting to a place where it's running out big time. And we have got to start coming together. There is so much division and discord and slander and abuse in the body of Christ, it's ridiculous. I mean, a lot of times people are like street people. I was like that on the streets when I was out there BC. I mean, you just, you couldn't trust me. And I couldn't trust anybody I was around. And that's not how it's supposed to be in the body of Christ. We're supposed to be bringing the new in, not the old. So we've got to constantly exchange and know that we have been given a mighty job to do and we've got to see it through. And part of that job is uplifting your brothers and sisters and being an encouragement. And standing in the gap for those that are out there that you don't even know that are in the body as well. Fulfill your position. Be a faithful steward. <clears throat> we must constantly view the body of Christ as a military operation. <clears throat> You know, there was an area where, um, there was a time, you know, that Sean Fute was traveling the country when all this stuff was going on, this coronavirus stuff was going on, and they were having, like, powerful revivals all over the place. <clears throat> and I remember just talking to the Lord. I was like, man, Lord, I want to be a part of that. Like, I want to, I'd like to be going and doing that and all this stuff, whatever. And he said, you are. And I said, what? He's like, your warfare, your worship, and your prayer is opening up heaven over those places. And it is binding back powers of darkness so that people can get saved in those locations. And we've got to start thinking like this. Don't think small. We think big. God is a big God. His hand stretches everywhere. So when you speak his truth, those words stretch everywhere. And that's got to be our mindset. I mean, this isn't stuff we haven't heard before, but it's, it's stuff that I know we need to take serious and, and get out of the complacency. 
we should be looking around everywhere we go for places to call fire down on and people to pray for. I don't know about you, every time I go to work, I pass by sex shops and methadone clinics and um, psychic places, and I pass by all kinds of garbage. I go through drug-infested neighborhoods just to get to work and come home. I am calling down destructive fire all the way to work and all the way home from work. And every one of you should be looking to do the same thing. That is part of what we are supposed to be good stewards of. That is our call, to destroy Satan's kingdom here on earth. To destroy Satan's kingdom in the heavenlies and here on earth. So each and every one of you needs to be on the lookout for places you can call fire down on. High altars of Satan, drug houses, prostitution places, sex stores, methadone clinics, all these places that are Satan's territory, we got to take them back. And if we're not out there taking them back, who is? So start taking this stuff serious. You're driving to work. I've got an hour and a half I spend in my truck driving back and forth to work. That's not lolly law, whatever time. That's time with God. Praying in the spirit. Worshiping. Calling down fire. So if you say you don't have time, I know every last one of you rides somewhere. We've all got time. We do. Amen? So we've got to start taking these things serious. It's getting crazy. And God is calling his people to step up and do what they're supposed to do. It's as simple as that. Do what you're supposed to do. It is a high honor to be trusted, to be trusted by God to be a spiritual warrior. And we must never take it for granted or grow weary. You are doing more than you know. So I got a question for you. While you're getting your house in order, while you're, you know, searching yourself through and trying to get these things positioned and everything, do you think the devil's going to leave you alone? Absolutely not. 2 Peter 2.20. On this road to destroying Satan's kingdom, he is constantly trying to destroy us. And this is kind of a a warning for what's waiting out there for you. And we're going to go over some signs so you can kind of check yourself and have an opportunity to get repositioned. Peter 2.20. Everybody there? Hallelujah. <clears throat> For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord, Je- Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled in them and overcome the latter end is worse for them than the beginning. So if you think you went through hell on earth before you knew Jesus, now that you know Jesus, now that you have been given all this truth, now that you have encountered the Holy Spirit, now that you know the things you were involved with were just straight demonic, if you don't keep your eyes on him and allow the enemy to entangle you with your old life again and you fall back out, it's going to be way worse for you. Way worse. And I know that there's people in here that can testify to that. And I know there's people in here that are grateful and thankful that they were able to make it back. Because there's a lot of people that aren't in here that didn't make it back. They're dead. They're dead or they're locked up. This is a reality check time. For those of you that are growing weary... In these times, for those of you that are having a hard time, for those of you that are struggling, for those of you that are ready to give up, take heed to the voice of the Lord today. Cry out to him. Get before him. Present yourself to him and ask him to rescue you. But when you do that, 
you've got to start putting action behind it. He will come in. He will cleanse you. He will heal you. He will fight for you. But you've got to start cooperating. There's got to be a desire for it. <clears throat> when we choose to take for granted the honor of being a faithful steward, there will be a great fall. Denying the call of the Lord on our lives is a slap in the face of God. Complacency, laziness, offense, and let's just face it, just not caring are fruits of taking for granted your stewardship. And that's the problem is some people just don't care. They just don't care. They just don't take it serious. They don't think it's real. They don't have that divine connection. But I'm telling you right now, cry out for that divine connection. He will meet you in the secret place. If you haven't experienced it yet, cry out for it. Show him how serious you are by seeking his face, whether you feel it or not, and he will show up and show out. I guarantee you. Don't you think God loves to kick the devil's butt? He's just waiting on us to call on his name so he can slaughter the enemy. He is waiting for us to get positioned so he can bring fire down, he can bring destruction down on the kingdom of Satan. We're the ones that tie his hands. <clears throat> Psalm 18, verse 1. I will love you, Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. My God, my strength and whom I will trust. My shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. Worship, worship, worship will bring destruction on your enemies. Crying out to him, calling out to him, getting down on your knees and telling them you're nothing without them. I need you. I need a touch from you. I need to know you're real. I need to know you're there. Show me your face. That's what he's after. Those that are truly seeking him, those that truly want a divine invasion. We've got to get in that place of complete surrender, complete head over heels love with him. And if you're not there, this is a roadmap to get there. Go in your secret place and seek him until he shows up. And don't stop because you don't feel it. Don't stop because you haven't seen anything or heard anything yet. He is testing your faithfulness. How bad do you want it? I know when I wanted drugs, I would get hit by a car, have a bone sticking out of my leg. I'm still getting to the trap house. I'm sure many of you were the same. I, there was nothing stopping me. And that is the same aggression I have here in the kingdom of God. Nothing is going to stop me or prevent me from seeing my dad. It's just not going to happen. You can't give up easily. You cannot give up easily. It's hard, but the blessing is beyond measure. <clears throat> Second Corinthians 10.3. I know we've all heard this one like probably 500,000 times. <clears throat> when I first graduated the program, um, or completed the program, I don't want to say graduate, but when I first completed the program, I heard this teaching. It's by a guy named Dan Muller. And it was called, How to Resist the Devil. And it's something that stuck with me all these years because it was just so simple. He just broke it down in such a simple way. Everybody makes it this crazy hard thing. And basically it was, whatever you hear, that doesn't line up with the truth, flip it. You're an idiot. Well, that's a lie. I'm a genius. So, I mean, if the devil's telling you, oh, man, you screwed up, you messed up, oh, the first thing people do is, oh, man, I messed up, oh, my gosh, what did I do? Well, you know it's the voice of the stranger. So you say, no, this is an opportunity for me to make things right. I didn't mess up. I'm not done. I'm not an idiot. 
Hallelujah. <clears throat> no, you understand what I'm saying. The lies come, you flip it around, the opposite. God says this about you. The devil says this about you. And that's, that's all it really is. It's as simple as that. There's truth and there's a lie. If you know it's a lie, flip it around and speak the truth. It's, it's the bottom line. It's, it's like, it's not hard. The problem is, is some people believe the lie. They believe they're not worthy. They believe they're not good enough. They believe they'll always be a failure. And that's when you need to get in your prayer closet and reach out for that divine invasion. Because you are loved, you are adored, no matter how many times you make a mistake, no matter how many times you fall, he's there. He's there with open arms to love you, to forgive you, to wipe the track marks off of you that you just got run over. He's there to clean you up. He's there to be there for you. So don't allow the voice of the stranger to tell you, well, you failed again, so you're never going to get it, so you might as well just give up. Don't go there. That's not what the Word of God says. That's not what it says at all. So we've got to start living on the truth. We've got to start living on what God says and not what the devil says. So let's read the Scripture. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians 10, verse 3. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. So, Let's talk about thoughts and all the nonsense that the enemy brings and tries to tell you all this stuff. And, and we'll talk about punishing disobedience and fulfilling obedience. So as we were saying, the enemy comes in, tries to beat you up, tell you you're an idiot, you made a mistake, you'll never make it, you're a failure, all this and whatever. So one of the things that was so cool about this teaching I heard was he said that every time the voice of the stranger would come with that stuff, no matter where he was, no matter what he was doing, he would just bless the Lord. It was like the stuff would just be vomiting over him, being thrown, fiery darts, fiery darts, fiery darts. And he's just like, Lord, I bless you. I thank you that I'm free. I thank you that I know you. I thank you for your love. Father, I bless you. I cherish you. I love you. I give you glory, Lord. I have an amazing life, and I give you glory for it, Father. That is obedience. That is punishing disobedience, which is to beat yourself up and to listen to the voice of the stranger, listen to the lie. So when those thoughts come, bless the Lord. Speak the truth. Minister to the Lord. Worship him. We just read that in Psalms, how he's crying out. He's calling on the Lord. He knows he's his strength. He knows he's his rescue. He knows he's his deliverer. And when the enemy's attacking you with lies and thoughts and things from your past and trying to pull you out of position... Those are the things you need to do. You've got to confess it, speak it, decree it, and the Lord will kick the devil's butt for you. So all this binding, I bind that. I Get that away from me. Lord, I just bless you. I bless you and I thank you. I praise you and I honor you, Lord. Deliver me and rescue me. Now, I'm not saying there are not times we need to bind and lose stuff. That's not, that's not what I'm saying. But, you know, we've heard pastors say a lot of times there's times where we just need to give it to the Lord and let him kick the devil's butt. And how we do that is calling on him as our deliverer, and he'll come in and have a good time wiping the floor with the devil. And then we're free. Psalms 25. So on this road to being a faithful steward, you're going to get tested. The enemy's going to try and beat you up. He's going to try and sway you. He's going to try and bring you to your, to your path or to your past. But as you practice being a faithful steward more and more, it will get easier to resist the devil. It will get easier to bless the Lord. And it'll, it'll come to you quicker. Like sometimes it takes a little while for people to respond and, instead of react. But over time, as you practice these things, the Lord will be closer to you, so you'll respond quicker. Or you'll just shut up until you can respond. Tuesday night, I did not want to come to church. I hurt my shoulder again at work, and it was hurting something pretty good. And um, I was like, shut up, devil. I'm going to church. 
So I came to church, and it was awesome. I mean, I had a blessed time. I went to the doctor the next day. It started hurting real bad again the next day, and so I left early and went to the doctor. And I came home, and I was just like, man, my shoulder hurts. I told my wife, I was like, man, my shoulder is killing me. And then it started hurting worse. I was like, well, of course it did. I'm sitting there speaking that it's hurting. I was like, what's wrong with me? I know better than this. So I'm like rebuking myself. I was like, whatever. So the next day, I'm going to work, right? And I've been driving down this same path for like four or five months. And I'm at a stoplight. And for the first time ever in four or five months, I look out the window up to the left, and there's this big billboard up there that says, shrug off shoulder pain. I was like, snap, man. I had to take a picture of it. I was like, I was like okay, Lord, I repent. I repent. I was like, man. I was like, man. So anyway, I'm speaking to myself up here too. You know, I got I to gotta shut up sometimes too. All the time. <clears throat> Psalms 25. Hallelujah. But that's the thing though. You know, if you love the Lord and you're looking for conviction and you're looking to be told to shut up, You'll see something like that, and you'll take heed to it. If you're full of stinking pride, you'll just blow it off like it, it's not even a sign from the Lord. Like, ah, that's just, whatever. But that's an area where we've got to be transparent with him. He sees it all. You're not getting away with anything. So you can either deal with it or run from it. But you're going to be accountable for it one way or another. Psalms 25. <clears throat> so we know that being a faithful steward begins with the fear of the Lord. If you don't maintain the fear of the Lord, you're not going to take care of anything God gives you. Who is the man that fears the Lord? Him shall he teach in the way he chooses. He himself shall dwell in prosperity, and his descendants shall inherit the earth. The secret of the Lord is with those who fear him and he will show them his covenant. <clears throat> so we know that we can do nothing without the presence of God. We can do nothing without revelation from the throne room of God. And without being a faithful steward, without maintaining the fear of the Lord, we won't have any of that. We won't have the presence. We won't have the revelation. It says, what did I write here? It says, the beginning of being a faithful steward and main, is maintaining the fear of the Lord. Revelations and mysteries are given to those who truly fear God and seek him, and they are received by impartation and vision. So revelations and mysteries are given to those who truly fear God and seek him. And those revelations and mysteries are received by impartation and vision. So when you are a true seeker of God, when you are a true seeker of his presence, there are things released from the throne room of God that impart within you. And I don't know about all of you, but a lot of times for me and pretty much probably everybody, that follows up with a vision. He shows you something, something you need to do, something that's coming, something you need to write down, something you need to stop doing. So that's a place of being a faithful steward of his presence and of his voice releases revelation and mysteries. And I think I wrote that down somewhere else. I kind of got ahead of myself there, but that's all right. Yeah, there it is. We must be faithful stewards of the voice of God and the presence of God. We must never stop fighting for his presence and fresh revelation. Without these, we are nothing. There is nothing without fresh revelation. There is nothing without the presence of God. And if you don't have the presence of God, you're not getting fresh revelation because that's where it is imparted in you and that's where you see it. So faithful stewardship of his presence and his voice, without it, there's nothing. 1 Corinthians 2, 6, and we'll close here. Hallelujah. However, we speak wisdom among those who are mature, yet not the wisdom of this age, nor of the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. 
But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory, which none of the rulers of this age knew. For had they known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of a man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed them to us through his Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the Spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that, are, that have been freely given to us by God. These things we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. But he who is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. What an honor and a blessing. There's so much that he wants to release to us. So much that he wants to give us. So much he wants to download in us. So much that he wants to pour out. The question is, do you want it? Do you want to do the right thing? Do you want to do what it takes to get it and to do the right thing and to maintain position and to fight for the kingdom of God and to fulfill his call for you, not your own, not soulish desires, but to be a faithful steward for the king of kings? It's a question we all got to ask ourselves because we're going to answer it one day, I promise you. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, we love you and bless you. We thank you, thank you, thank you for the opportunity, Lord. We thank you that you haven't given us what we deserve, but you've given us opportunity to be a part of something amazing. I ask right now in the name of Jesus that that would be imparted in every person here in this place, every person watching, Lord. I ask, Father, that you would impart in them a thirst, a hunger, a desire, a passion, a zeal for more of you and less of themselves, for more of your will and a severing and freeing from their will. Cause us to do whatever it takes to see things through for your kingdom, for your glory, Lord. We love you.